This is Josephine. This presentation is for my drawing students and it is on drawing drapery and all of these pieces are from the British Museum. The first piece by Federico Barocchi is a, just a wonderful page of studies of arms and hands. And this arm protruding from this very gestural contour line study of a sleeve and here it's a little bit more developed. You can see the forearm coming out of this sleeve and all the beautiful red chalk and black chalk hatching and cross-hatching, heightening with white, beautiful contour, accent, dark shadows. I mean, this is a, just a marvelous comp composition um, to keep, move, moves the eye through, lots to look at, and this leg going sideways with, sideways with the foot. A lot of fun. It's a great way to begin this presentation. And here is another piece by Barocchi. This is a full compositional study, gridded for transfer to a painting. And the foreground figure uh, figures carry the eye up to the figure sitting on the clouds. And there's even a little tiny town way off in the distance. So this is a completely defined composition. The play of light uh, uh, on the forms and the figures is completely worked out. And notice how the, the flow of drapery, translucent drapery in this figure, more solid in this figure. But the, the drapery is used all, almost theatrically to carry the eye across the form down across the composition, up and notice these folds in, in the robe of St. Francis, reach up and take us back up across and up to the Virgin. So wherever we start, we come back down around. Wherever we begin, we keep the eye moving. So the artist has very carefully controlled not only play of light, foreground, background, distance, who's important in the top of this pyramidal structure, but the eye of the viewer is directed throughout the composition continuously by the drapery. Here's a um, little study by Salambani, you know, little boy, and a man kneeling with red chalk. The economy of his contour line, very bold and expressive, it changes direction, real accent, the way he uses a uh, uh, crisp line there, and using um, hatching and cross hatching to show the, the angles of the drapery. This is going in this direction, this is going in dir this direction, heightening with white. This one by Fra Bartolomeo, this composition has a clear defined area of light and dark. This foreground figure has a lot of contrast from the light side to the dark side. The figure in the background, the value structure is a little bit uh, middle ground uh, of values. So middle gray, you know, a little bit of lighter, a little bit of darker, but the high contrast is focused on the self-contained figure of Mary wrapped up in her robes and there's a direction of light. The architecture or structure of the drapery is very carefully marked out. And you'll notice that in many of these drawings there's a direct uh, direction of light and we have the turning edge as the folds of drapery move from the light side to the shadow side. You'll see some uh, reflected light there that dark area of the turning edge. We're going to see a lot of that in these drawings. This one by Fra Bartolomeo. They wash in some tone of ink on the background of the paper and then carefully define the structure of the drapery and then build up the shadows uh, from the middle ground, really dark accents, very carefully rendering every fold and using white to heighten it as if the highlights from the light source that are very close to this figure really bright and as it falls away from the light so the light is really focused up here there's still the light side and the shadow side but it gets faded and again this drapery keeps the eye moving across this form the practice at the time was to soak fabric in wet clay drape it across wooden models and once it dried, it was hardened to an almost sculptural form so that the artist could continue to study from the drapery repeatedly or for many, many hours over days of, of time without the drapery slipping or moving or blowing around or slipping off the uh, figure. So it's a great way to study. These are um, three bishops, and I particularly like the way this piece of fabric is, it appears to be someone might be holding the tip of the fabric only no one's there. It's a pretty neat trick. But the, notice the shapes here, just very carefully recorded. It shows the movement and those crimson folds in the drapery, heightened with white cast shadow. You see the little core of edge, turning edge there. It's a really neat way to um, define the form. You can uh, see the same thing here, that turning edge all the way down. That core of the shadows, just, just punch up that dark there and add some white highlight. There's 
the reflected light kind of pops out because you add darker value. So it makes these one, two, three, four, five folds really stand out as if they're volumetric. Mantegna, drawing the structure, notice these, the direction of the lines go in a horizontal way, go up and across the curves of the form. So he sketched this out with uh, chalk and then went with pen and ink over the top to really crisp it up, define it, and you'll see little areas of the core of the shadow and reflected light that to define that turning edge is always a light against a dark. So very detailed presentation of a study of drapery. A great way to learn to draw is to copy master drawings too. That's a fun thing that can be done to increase your ability to perceive uh, what's going on with all those folds and the turning edge and reflected light, but also to, you know, draw like the old masters. So here we have Botticelli and Notice he started out with white chalk on some rubbed in tone or um, like a, an ink wash on the paper, a pale wash on the paper. Drew with the, the chalk and he didn't finish this side, but this one uh, built in some, you know, rubbed in chalk to build up the, the darker values and then heightened with white and then using the brown ink to really define the lines. So a very lovely drawing, very curvilinear and detailed form. Contormo, this one's more more kind of economical, almost gestural. The contour line is very, um, you know, just very confidently drawn in. Hatching used to build up the shadow sides. And notice again, you know, the structure is very carefully defined where the folds overlap. The angles of, sh of shading develop a, a feeling of that plane in space where it how it changes direction across the form, and he accents the hand quite nicely there too. Uh, Rosso Fiorentino, uh, they called him Rosso because he used a lot of red not only in his drawings with ink and chalk, but also in his painting, a lot of bright red in his painting, so that, that was, became his nickname, but very carefully defined form, and you really see little areas of turning edge, crisp accents of, uh, you know, what happens is that shape curves across the form strong direction of light, this is the light side, this is the shadow side, lots of intermediate uh, transition zones. Fantin Latour, bold accent to show those crimson folds, more gestural, quicker in style, but again, there's that kind of core of that shadow popped in there. Looks like he um, wanted to study what happened uh, the, to the drapery at the feet, so here's the hip, the, the pelvis, the knee, the foot, so he, again, very gestural to find that Form. This is another one by Gandini who that is also very gestural. So Gandini's figure crouching down, clutching this drapery up around them. Uh, you know, it flows across the form. It's almost like a compressed energy. Very expressive, very gestural. The shading is done very quickly and very confidently. But the flowing fabric just keeps going and we see little it's a reflected light turning it done very quickly by just accenting that dark. Same thing here you see in this elbow area, a little bit of strong turning edge, reflected light in here. This shading across uh, Karachi's, or attributed to Karachi, that means we think he's the one that drew this, carries the eye across the form. The curvilinear lines of the drapery carry the eye across the form, hatching across the entire area to drop that back into space a little bit, as if there's more light on the belly than there is on the underside of the drapery. More light here. Play of light carries the eye across the form. This anon anonymous German artist, it says it's on a light red paper. It, it looks a little different in the reproduction. It looks orange to me, but this was done with metal point, so it's basically like a pencil lead, only it's of metal, and drawn on the middle ground of the paper, and white used to show the light. Very detailed, uh, crisp edges of those uh, lines in the drapery. This one by Gambara. Uh, this one is a study for painting, also gridded for transfer to a wall, a ceiling. This looks actually looks like this. Oops, a ceiling. I love when I do that. Um, looks like it was gridded for a wall to a um, for a painting for the wall uh, for the ceiling because we're looking below the uh, figure who's floating in space. Use of strong uh, accent, crisp contour line to really define exactly what's happening. It looks like this figure is floating up in the clouds and the drapery is just flowing, billowing across the form. Very dynamic composition.
Here, this drawing was originally attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, but um, it was later attributed to Lorenzo de Credi as a, a, a study after or a copy of a uh, da Vinci drawing. It's back in the Renaissance period. Artists would learn to draw by looking, copying each other's work, and it's a great practice still today. And this, there was a wash put on the paper to present a middle ground, and the structure of the drapery is drawn, and the shadow side is developed with more shading, that turning edge is developed, and then it's heightened with white to show where the highlights hit the, the fabric. This drawing by De Crady uh, reminds me more of Botticelli's style, so perhaps he studied Botticelli as well, I don't know, but again, very curvilinear and fluid, very lovely, soft, diaphanous, flowing fabric and curls, and the whitening with white and crisp um, line, but he used metal point and brown wash on a uh, partially oxidized, I'm sorry, the, the uh, color is partially oxidized on a pink prepared paper, so it has a very soft, kind of flowing, feel and the pink paper is a lighter kind of tonality overall. So there's not a lot of real strong, bold darks. It's a more delicate drawing overall. This one by Vasari. Uh, he was a Florentine painter, architect, and art historian. Who He recorded a lot about the lives of the artists, but he could draw like a master. Boy, these this, the way he drew the drapery and the you know the musculature and the head of the figure. Again, taking a look at this, you know you can always take a look at these drawings. Uh, look up, look them up in the British Museum. You know, write it down, look them up. But these the way he uses hatching and contour line to develop the form is um, really dynamic. This one by Tibaldi, strong sense of light and and shadow side of the form, flowing fabric. This one by Raphael. Very beautiful, detailed use of line and hatching and cross-hatching. Notice how he changes the, cha the direction of his marks to roll the eye across the form using contour line and direction of line to develop the form, as well as just extreme precision. And this one by Van Dyck, much more bold. He drew it first in chalk, and then he came in with brown ink and just really made some very bold, dramatic decisions on how he wanted the pattern of light to play across this form in the drapery. This one, William Hilton, a British artist, um, looks like just a quick figure study, uh, but potentially just to study the flow of drapery. Again, the way the drapery folds, every uh, bit of the structure is carefully recorded and a play of light on form. The gray paper uh, acting as the middle ground, accenting darks, crisp line, and heightened with white. Another one, more detailed, more defined, like nice dark bold cast shadows in there, hatch lines, nice contour line, and heightening with white. This guy could draw beautifully. Same thing, this artist, uh, French, Francesco Salviati, seated figure, the flow of drapery across the lower uh, a figure across the lap, down the legs, and then this one of the upper torso. And then did like another little study over here. Use of um, shading is really quite nice here. The overlapping contour, very confident, very um, smooth transitions in those values. Uh, Frederick Watts, these three little drapery studies, nice little details in here. So, you know, these are great to take a look at. Up close and personal, if you want to look at them on the British Museum uh, site, look at them uh, to study the detailing, they're all there. This one, I love that what is not there as well, much as what is there. The composition of this one is just really quite beautiful because of the understated physical presence of what he's sitting on. The drapery is the focus. That way that hand is gestured in very lightly and carefully. And then again, you know, heightening with white on the buff paper, darker value built in. This one uh, used to be also attributed to da Vinci, but now to Boltrafio. Again, the way this artist uses light contrast, the heightening with white is quite dramatic and beautifully effective, beautiful shading, the, the folds of the sol solid area of dark value, all the beautiful little detail in here. Now we have Michelangelo, no known for his uh, sculptures, architecture, painting, uh, you name it, but his favorite thing was to carve marble, but he could draw like an angel and he used cross-hatching beautifully, very defined form. So, hope you enjoyed the presentation.